Here's another function where we have three inputs and one output. So again, we can't see the graph, but um, we could examine the level set, level surfaces in um, <clears throat> in the input space. So we could choose a few values for the output, and then see what kind of surface we get with those different values. And we get some different surfaces here. So if we get z alone, z is equal to negative x squared plus y squared um, plus w. So I just took the x squared over and added the y squared over and then the w is still there. So w equals negative 2, z equals negative x squared plus y squared minus 1, and z equals negative x squared plus y squared, and z equals negative x squared plus y squared plus 1, and z equals negative x squared plus y squared plus 2. Each of these is, um, is a paraboloid, right? Um, each is a hyperbolic paraboloid, in fact, and what we're doing when we change the level set is just shifting, every time we increase the level set by 1, it's just shifting our, our hyperbolic paraboloid up one. So we're going to have sort of a, well, it's a stack of Pringles, isn't it? So you've got, you've got your you got one hyperbolic, oops, that's not hyperbolic, that's elliptic. You got one hyperbolic paraboloid, and on top of it, there's another hyperbolic paraboloid, and then another hyperbolic paraboloid, and so on. Let's go ahead and plot them in maple, because the picture will be a lot better than my sketch. Again, we were able to solve for z, so we don't have to use implicit plot 3D, we can just use the plot 3D command negative x squared plus y squared, and then whatever w is, negative x squared um, plus y squared um, minus 2, and negative x squared plus y squared minus 1, and negative x squared plus y squared with 0, and uh, negative x squared plus y squared plus 1, and negative x squared plus y squared plus 2, and let's just display all of our plots together. Yeah, just what we thought, right? It's like it just came out of a can of Pringles. We've got our stacked um, hyperbolic paraboloids. One more. Let's look at the level surfaces of this function. This is kind of fun. Let's see what we get. So again, try different values for w. Maybe w equals negative 2. I'm just picking values of w that will be fairly simple to work with so we can get a sense for this function. If we have uh, negative 2, what I do is I'll, I'll write it as x squared plus y squared. x squared plus y squared is z squared minus w. So subtracting negative 2 would be adding 2. So that is an hyperboloid of one sheet. Right? x squared plus y squared equals z squared minus minus 1 is plus 1. x squared plus y squared equals z squared. There's a cone supposed to be next. x squared plus y squared equals z squared um, minus w, so z squared minus 1, and x squared plus y squared equals z squared minus 2. Ah, so we have hyperboloids. First they're one sheet, then there's a cone, and then we have hyperboloids of two sheets. So we've got, we've got this hyperboloid of one sheet, that's when w equals negative 2. We come in a little bit and we've got another uh, narrower hyperboloid in there, and then we've got a cone inside of that, and then in, then inside of that we've got a hyperboloid of two sheets, so hyperboloids of two sheets here, and then inside of that we've got a hyperboloid of, okay, so we get the sense that if you want to increase in this function, you need to be, you need to move inside here and then move out of the z-axis, and that's going to get you the biggest values of w on this function, right? I'm just thinking about going perpendicular to the level sets at all times. Right? It's going to carry me up that way, so that's how I could increase on this function. If I wanted to decrease on this function, I'd go in the opposite direction, right? I'd be moving out, so my z value would be going to zero, and I'd be moving out further and further in the xy plane, and that would make the output values smaller and smaller and smaller see if this could be reasonable to visualize very well in, in Maple. It won't be as pretty as these because we've got to go back and use 
um, implicit plot 3D. See, I can easily adapt what we did with our nested spheres. We just have to change this slightly because it was x squared plus y squared equals z squared. And then we had um, first plus 1 and then plus, um, well, first plus 2, right? And then plus 1. And then the next one uh, was just a cone, so just 0. And then we had minus 1. We need one more plot here. Oops, I hit enter too soon and I started to get my plot. So let me go to the end of this one and hold down shift and hit enter to make some space. And I can paste in another copy and do my negative 2. And we're looking at this. Um, the hyperboloids of one sheet are going to be the outermost, so I could do that. I, I don't mind doing that with the contour. And the one inside of that, let's let's do the rest of them wireframe. And see what that does for us. See if that's very easy to visualize. Oh yeah, you can see the now um, implicit plot 3D. We've seen doesn't do very good with the cone, right? It sort of gets bored and misses the misses the point of the corn misses the point of the cone, but there's our cone inside there. If we wanted to clean up the picture, what we could do would be to maybe write these as write these as um, parametric surfaces, and that would help um, that would help Maple graph them nicer. But you can see the here's the hyperbola of one sheet, and inside of that's the other hyperbola of one sheet, and then this is supposed to be the cone in the center, and then you start working your way. You, then, you, then you start getting hyper, hyperboloids of two sheets and so on. So not too bad of a representation.